So we're on to the final film in the quartet of Torment set from Arrow Video, Hellraiser Bloodlines. Now this was uh, our bloodline. Sorry. This was uh, the only one in the set that I had not seen before. I've heard some really uncertain things about this, and I was a little bit cautious. But you know what? You go in with an open mind, and if something doesn't work, it just doesn't work. Um, I liked bloodline. I was surprised myself when I put it on, but I found it really entertaining um, I would love to see the, the longer cut that's rumoured to be out there I know it's been butchered a little bit but I still find it a fun idea how it tries to expand the mythos of Pinhead now I do feel that at this point we've lost a lot of what makes Hellraiser special I am Pain but in the slew of uh, horror movies which get this many sequels, they sometimes become almost bastardised versions of themselves, which we kind of have here. Uh, the story revolves around one family, Le Marchand. Uh, we have them uh, in the olden days, as we have the one of their generations creating the Lament configuration box set. We have one in a current day and we have one in the future who is on board a space station. In fact, that's the one we join at the start as he has some robotic device opening uh, the box and releasing Pinhead. But then he stopped. He stopped by so space marines who then take him in for questioning. Why are you doing what you're doing? And that's where you get the kind of wrap around. Well, I'll have to go back to the start and tell you. And he starts telling his stories fable how he is tied together with this box and the evil within it and is looking for a way to destroy it. This was advertised as the death of Pinhead. Soon the bloodline will be severed. We've seen that before in the you know, final Fridays and, and all these different kind of movies and Freddy's dead and they like to kill off our um, popular antagonist horror killers but Hellraiser Bloodline had a lot of things that I really enjoyed. I liked the fact that we had these three varied stories all following someone from the same family as they kind of dealt with the continuing curse placed upon them by creating this force of evil. Even if it wasn't intended for that by them, they still had a part to play in it and it kind of plagues the generations of this family. And I kind of loved that idea of it. The idea that um, Pinhead was always looking for that vengeance, always looking to come back and go back to the Lachon family and, and take care of um, business, so to speak. <laughs> oh, you suffer beautifully. And of course you get the blood and the guts as you would expect with this and it's fine. There's some interesting ideas. I feel like a couple of the times, particularly in the last one, they've kind of talked themselves into a corner a little bit with the ending of Hellraiser 3 where you have the building that seems to have shaped itself like the box. So now we're having to be in that building. It's having to be part of the story because we set that up. They set up these ideas which aren't really thought out uh, I mean you get to the fact of how they work now it feels just a little bit odd so we have this uh, monolithic skyscraper that is now the giant box this is not a room this is a holocaust waiting to wake itself and uh, it seems to have certain rooms that open up and other people to move into an almost hellscape torment uh, and uh, die horrible deaths but it just feels kind of clunky there's lots of little inconsistencies within this story that are just never explained but with an 86 minute runtime it moves along really quickly and doesn't give you a chance to really sit down and think about these things it's not until after the movie when you're kind of Scratching your head going, wow, that was a, a young Adam Scott I saw in this movie. Uh, and then you start to think through some of the plot points where it doesn't quite make sense. But for a horror sequel, and a horror sequel set in space, as a lot of things were happening in the 90s, it's kind of fun. I wish we could get that much longer version. There is a work print version 
on this disc, which I am going to watch. It's not the best of qualities, um, but I, I still kind of want to check it out because I, I did enjoy this one. Let's dive into the disc and have a look at some of the extras. Here we are in the disc for Hellraiser Bloodline. Let's go to the special features. First up we have an audio commentary with Stephen Jones, unit publicist of the first three Hellraiser films and Kim Newman, author and film critic as well as screenwriter Peter Aitkins. And it was a new commentary. Next up we have, we have The Beauty of Suffering which runs at 27 minutes 48 seconds and it talks about the way uh, goth and BDSM and fetish cultures connected and uh, how that kind of grew and how the film kind of always stayed at the forefront of that movement. Then we have the work print version of Hellraiser Bloodline which uh, I have watched and we'll probably talk about in a separate video. Um, it's not the complete director's cut but it is close to what he wanted kind of and then we've got alternate footage as well as that. Then we have Hellraiser Evolutions which is an archival documentary which is great. I watched it on the previous version that we had here and is well worth your time. It runs at roughly 48 minutes 13 seconds. Then we have the Books of Blood and Beyond, which again is another archival uh, extra, which we had for a previous Hellraiser release. It runs at 19 minutes 23 seconds, and it's great for getting me kind of amped for checking out more of Clive Barker's work. Then we have the theatrical trailer, which runs 1 minute 14 seconds, and the image gallery. And that's the extras for Hellraiser Bloodline. So there we have it. Hellraiser Bloodline was enjoyable. I like this one. It is nowhere near the original couple of films, but it's still entertaining. It's still a fun ride. It still has some interesting facets to it. And I would love to know your thoughts on this film, whether you loved it, hated it, fell somewhere in the middle. Let me know in the comment box below your thought of this or as the set in a whole, because I think it's pretty fantastic myself. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below are links to the Patreon, membership program and manvfilm.com. Always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.